Good morning, YouTube. I don't know what it is about fall that makes me want to bake like all day, every day, nonstop, but that's okay with me and it's fine with the kids. In this case, we're going to make an almond pound cake that is simple, buttery, luscious. Mmm, you're going to like this one. All right, let's cook, y'all. We got a family to feed. Make a pound cake. I remember making pound cakes when I was really little. And yes, I got in the kitchen and I actually cooked real food <laughs> with knives and stoves because I grew up in the 70s. <laughs> All right, so our mixing bowl right here. Ah, okay, now it's plugged in. This is so easy. This is one of the best things about pound cakes is they go together in seconds. Well, maybe not seconds, but you know what I mean. Okay, eight ounces of cream cheese and I let it sit out here on the counter and get soft. And now it's not going to want to turn loose. <laughs> Good. Welcome to three minutes of me fighting cream cheese for my next act. I'll have an argument with the butter. <laughs> All right. Sorry about that. So glad that got soft so it was easy to work with. Jeez. All right. So we're just going to beat that up. And we're gonna add a stick and a half of butter, despite the mixer complaining. Pound cakes are one of those things that, you know, the legends or the stories told is that it used to be one pound each, butter, sugar, eggs, and flour. I don't know how true that is. There's some great food historians though. fun YouTube and TikTok channels. Okay. So all you want to do is beat this together really well until it's nice and combined. And if you've watched any of my videos, you know what I'm going to say right now. Scrape down the sides of your bowl. Actually, in this particular mixer, everything gets stuck on the bottom. There's probably a quarter inch down there where all kinds of stuff can hide. And that means it won't mix in. So we scrape it down just to get it combined. Let me turn it that way. Yep. All right, while this is mixing, we're going to add half a teaspoon of salt. Just because we want it nicely combined. And I forgot to, I forgot to preheat my oven. You're actually going to bake this at 300 degrees. I know that's low. I have. If you read antique cookbooks, which for some reason I don't collect, thank God, because I would I would no longer have a home. I'd have a cookbook depository. Uh, but if you read old cookbooks or old-fashioned recipes, this kind of pound cake was baked in what was called a slow oven. After you had heated everything up, and roasted whatever you had at higher temperatures. You had a lot of heat left in, the, in an oven. And this was, of course, with, with wood stoves or what have you. And because fuel was expensive, it took a lot of work to, to get, that residual heat was valuable. And so there were all kinds of recipes. Like I know salt risen bread, which is an Appalachian thing, was developed from, from using the leftover heat in your oven. Pound cakes often were baked in a slow oven. Three cups of sugar. We're gonna mix that with our cream cheese and butter and we're gonna beat that until it's nice and creamy. Just recently, I reread, and I'm not sure if this is an argument for or against revisiting childhood <laughs> icons, but I reread Laura Ingalls Wilder Little House series and it talks about pound cakes in that. And of course, Farmer Boy is nothing but one long <laughs> food porn. <laughs> if you were a burgeoning foodie and didn't know it in the 70s and got hold of Farmer Boy, it drove you insane. Anyway, I remember one of the cakes that they talked about in that. Oh, look, this butter and sugar fell out. Dang. Anyway, they talked about pound cakes and beating the batter for these cakes by hand. I 
think this was when Little Town on the Prairie, maybe, or these Happy Golden Years. One of the later ones, because they had eggs, because they had gotten a flock of chickens from the, their last name started with a B. Those people. Oh, I almost had it. Shoot. Anyway, I, I listen. There's a great podcast out called Wilder. Talks about Laura Ingalls and exactly what I just mentioned. How it was problematic. <laughs> and how beloved she is. There are plenty of us that had one memory from childhood and something completely different when we went to share it with our own children. Anyway, it's a great podcast. Also, Prairie Fires, which is the biography of Laura Ingalls Wilder, came out a couple years ago. Also fantastic. I don't know why. We now have the Laura Ingalls Wilder podcast show. Okay, so nice and creamy. See this? All right, so now is when we, we flavor. We're going to add a teaspoon of almond extract. I love almond ex extract. It will take your head off. It is incredibly powerful stuff. Treat it with caution. Two teaspoons, though, of vanilla, which is also... Lovely. Does not take your head off. And then this is kind of the inner workings of a pound cake. We have seven large eggs. And we're simply going to alternate an egg. We're going to wait till the egg is mostly mixed in and then some flour. This is a very, a very chill activity. And then every egg or two, you want to scrape down because you don't want to over mix the flour. Wait a minute. Look, I've got an egg holding on. <laughs> you don't want to over mix the flour added additions. You really only want it just to come together. So there was like an egg and a half. There's an egg and two eggs. Okay, fine. And then as that comes together, you can see a little more of the flour. Three or four batches are about right. And then when you've hit this stage, this is why I'm talking about scraping down the sides. You see all the, the flour mixture that's collected on the sides and has not mixed in? Well, if our goal is to get this fully incorporated without over mixing the flour, which would develop the gluten too much, which would make your cake tough. Do it in stages, all right? So we're at three eggs and that much egg white that just wants to, come on, here we go. My eggs are super fresh. I just brought them home yesterday. And if you really have decided that you love cooking, pay attention to the difference in eggs between like the day you bring them home and a week later and two weeks later and three weeks later. Eggs will last for weeks. They really will. They're kind of miraculous. Especially if you don't mess with them. Keep them in the refrigerator. I buy those great huge boxes of eggs, the ones that have um, 15 dozen eggs. Although the boys and I were talking about this just recently, we almost have hit that point where we don't need to buy warehouse amounts quite as much anymore. Although they're cheaper that way, eggs are cheaper that way, and because they do last for so long. You have weeks to use them up. Look at that, it just doesn't wanna move. That's a fresh egg. The white really wants to stay attached to the yolk. That's lovely. So for that, this, so I'm gonna go right in there. go. Our last little bit of egg. See? A little bit of egg. Pop. Now, if you want to, you can use a bunk pan. 
I have discovered I need to go shopping because I do not have a bug pan that I like. And see, that's my excuse. That's, my, that's how my justification works. Give me enough time, I can justify just about anything. <laughs> <laughs> right now, it's bump pans. But, <clears throat> if you don't have a bump pan, you have a couple loaf pans, which will work very well. And it makes lovely little cakes. All right, I have got to wash my hands. Look at look at the mess I make out of, I, that makes me crazy. I gotta wash my hands. I'm gonna be back, hang on a minute. Oh, I feel better. <laughs> Did some dishes, had to do some triage on my countertop. If you have a kid at home, you can offer them the beater. If you don't have a kid at home, you can keep it all for yourself. Oh, dang it. There. All right. Now, if I'm loading more than one pan from one bunch of batter, I like to use one of these dishers. It only helps you keep it even. You don't have to be precious about it. But if you've got the same number of scoops in each of your pans, your cake will bake evenly. That one was a little loaded. So that one's loaded too. So it takes a minute more to do it this way. But it sure does make it easy to get your batter to come out. bought these I had had the same sets of oops lost in the airpod I'm surprised that didn't fall in the cake <laughs> I forgot which one I was on that one that same airpod fell in the fountain at the National Cathedral a few months ago <laughs> I think there's a holy water joke in there somewhere. Anyway, I said some bad words at the National Cathedral. And then my son <laughs> jumped in there and got it out for me. So I guess I was forgiven for my language, despite the location. I think the coolest thing I saw at the National Cathedral were the space windows. So instead of like the rose windows that most places have, these had beautiful stained glass windows devoted to the space program and I was all about that. That was so amazing. I think I ended up with this one having more in it. Y'all count and tell me if I did that. I think I did. I don't care. Okay, so here we go. Boom. There are our almond pound cakes. These are going in my 300 degree oven for about an hour and a half. Then I'm going to check them and I'm going to decide if I want them to go longer or not. I think we're gonna be right at one and a half hours. I'll let you know. Where are you going? It was kind of funny, Ben walked in <laughs> just a minute ago and he said, what, what smells so buttery? <laughs> That's like a perfect, ta-da, moment <laughs> right there. Okay, so I checked it an hour and a half and they were still a little little wet in the middle. So I gave it another 20 minutes. So we're at an hour and 50 minutes. That is not unusual for a pound cake. This is a nice, slow, long bake. Remember the whole slow oven thing. Low oven. I grew up, <laughs> grew up in the Appalachian Mountains and my family had family members that were very old school and I was really blessed and lucky that I had people in my life that literally were from 19th century. How crazy is that? My grandparents were older than typical when I was born. They were in their late forties when my dad was born. So my grandparents were born in 1891 and 1899. Isn't that crazy? All right. So I just ran the knife around the outside and we really are just turning these out. To let them cool. Anyway, my whole point in saying all that 
is I was lucky enough to have this connection to history and to the past a lot of people don't have. Of course, I lost my grandparents earlier than a lot of people. But what a remarkable and rich history they gave me. And I, I always, I often find myself thinking of some of these turns of phrase that you just don't hear anymore. Like a slow oven. And just what in the world is a slow oven? And what does that mean? Well, it means the fire has died down. Your oven's a bit cooler. And you can do stuff like this. Okay, so here are our pound cakes. Now, they smell heavenly. It is like an angel is wafting through my kitchen. I'll tell you that right here and now. Look how beautiful. You hear that behind me? That's Boone coming in here to check out what smells so buttery. Unfortunately, we're going to let this cool. If you cut into them right now, you're not going to get the carryover cooking. You're not going to let them rest. They will lose cohesion. They'll just fall all over the place and just fall apart. That's no good for anybody. Boone just shrugged. Like, that's okay. It's fine with him. <laughs> I'm going to make him let some of these, let these cool for a little bit. Okay. Boone, give me 45 minutes. Okay. okay. All right. We'll be back then.